this is Colin O'Keefe checking in for LXP and TV. A pair of Democratic senators have proposed legislation that would, among other things, ban use of non-compete agreements with low-wage employees. Joining me to discuss this potential legislation is attorney Robert Milligan of Cypher Shaw and editor of the firm's blog, Trading Secrets. Uh, Robert, first off, for those of us who are just kind of getting up to speed with this legislation, can you explain, you know, what exactly it is and what it potentially cover? Absolutely, and thanks for having me, Colin. Uh, yes, the MOVE Act is a uh, piece of legislation proposed by two uh, Democratic senators, uh, Al Franken and Chris Murphy. And it's an important piece of legislation. What it would do is essentially superimpose federal law on uh, non-compete agreements. Uh, non-compete agreements have typically been the province of state law. And there's two specific requirements that this pr proposed legislation would do. It would ban non-compete agreements with low-wage workers. It would also require employers uh, to provide notification before introducing a non-compete agreement into any potential employees. So a separate and apart from whether they're low-wage workers or not, it would apply to the entire workforce. Now, um, with respect to the ban for low-wage workers, uh, it's significant as, how, as far as how they define low-wage workers. Now, low-wage workers are defined as somebody that makes less than $15 an hour, uh, $31,000 a year, or if you're in a jurisdiction where they have a minimum lower wage that may be higher than the uh, $15 an hour, uh, you, that you can, you can impose uh, uh, non-compete agreements with those workers as well. So that is somewhat significant. Um, now, with respect to the no notification, now if this particular legislation would be adopted, that could be an administrative nightmare for employers across the country as having to provide this notification uh, prior to um, introducing a non-compete agreement to uh, a particular employee. Um, you know, as far as some of the purposes for the legislation, what they've said is that um, you know, low-wage workers have a hard enough time getting by and they shouldn't have any inhibitions on their ways um, to join a competitor. But this may be legislation that's really uh, in search of a problem because um, you don't hear very much about low-wage workers actually having non-competing agreements enforced against them. Now, it may be that certain employers in certain industries use uh, non-compete agreements with lower wage workers, um, but I would say it's probably the exception to the rule. And if those agreements were ever tried to be enforced in a court of law, I think a judge would look very skeptical at them as far as whether they're really enforced. What the courts are looking for is really whether there's any confidential or trade secret information that you're trying to protect. And, you know, in the case of a uh, restaurant worker or a low-wage worker, you know, unless they're a higher level management, there's probably not the level of confidential information or trade secrets that would, in, would make a judge want to enforce the agreement. I see. And then, you know, say I'm an employer here, I'm taking a look at this. What should I be aware of? What's the impact? Is this something that I should be worried about? You know, what's your take on, uh, on you know, I guess the, the, the potential impact down the road here? Absolutely. And I think, you know, with respect to this legislation, there may be some good intent behind it. I don't think it has any chance of being passed. Uh, it's introduced by, you know, two Democratic senators in a, in a Republican controlled Senate. That being said, it could be a uh, precursor to legislation that may be introduced in some of the states. Um, you know, there may be notification requirements that some state legislatures uh, may introduce, um, as well as uh, they may want to adopt a similar type language about restricting non-competes with certain level of wage workers. So this could be sort of an incubator stage where state legislatures want to look at adopting this legislation. But I think the main takeaway from employers is that um, to be cognizant of who you're asking to sign non-compete agreements. And uh, are you asking the right people to sign non-compete agreements? Because it can get somewhat nonsensical if you're having to defend these particular agreements into a court where there's no real legitimate protectable interest. And where you get yourself in trouble is asking the employees to sign the agreements in the first place. Uh, because the employees could later retain an attorney and it could become a public relations nightmare. And it could also be a, you know, a lawsuit on your hands. The one thing I should conclude with is I think that this particular legislation as is drafted is really problematic in the sense that they don't really define non-compete agreements very well. And so it could apply not just to non-compete agreements, but to standard non-disclosure agreements and non-solicitation agreements. And so thereby banning the use of those with low wage workers and also re requiring a requirement um, that you provide notification to any employees in which you want to ask a, a non-disclosure agreement to be signed. I don't think that was their intent, but the language of the statute as, as proposed uh, certainly lends itself to that interpretation.
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, as you mentioned, though, this specific piece of legislation is is unlikely to pass on its own. It's certainly a trend worth watching as we see uh, if the states take care of this or, you know, of course, if, if, if as the landscape of the Senate changes in years to come, if this is a priority down the road as well. Uh, once again, that was Robert Milligan of Cypher Shaw. For more of his insight on this particular sub subject and others in the space, be sure to visit TradeSecretsLaw.com. Thank you for joining me today, Robert. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate it.